Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am going to be teaching you some IELTS reading today uh, from the heart of Europe here in Hungary, Budapest. Uh, our materials are coming from our websites uh, for general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com and for academic IELTS, check us out at aehelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of help for you to master the IELTS exam, including six original tests, over a hundred hours of videos, a fully interactive course, and uh, native English speaking support for writing and for speaking. Hi, Onisim. Hi, Pachu. Hi, uh, Dia. Welcome to the class. Uh, our websites, they look like this. Just a quick sneak peek here. This is our general IELTS website with the green background. Click that red button to join. And for academic IELTS, it's this website with the blue background. Click that button there to join. All right, ladies and gents. So um, let's take a look at the general IELTS reading for today. So this is what we're looking at uh, to start off our reading. This is coming from our second exam book for those students who have it. This is our exam book number two and it is test number uh, six. Okay, so this is test number six, exam number two. All right, uh, so Remember, for the general IELTS, uh, section one and section two in the reading each have two short passages, some kind of an information brochure or a warning or a pamphlet for a museum or something like that. So um, you have to uh, read two short passages for section one, answer about eight six, seven, eight questions for each. And then uh, for pass or section three, it's one long passage. So today we're looking at these shorter passages. And your first step is always to read the title and try to predict or think about what the reading will be, okay? So here, uh, the title is East Bradford Cycling Club join today. So what do you think students? What is this reading about? Okay, what kind of a reading is this? Just by reading the title, what do you think? So again, the title is East Bradford Cycling Club join today. Uh, Onisim, you think it's an article? I don't, I don't think it's an article. I don't think that's what it is. Uh, an article would be some kind of a news story. So uh, step one for your reading or strategy one is read the title and predict the content of the passage. So our example here is uh, East Bradford Cycling Club right? And it says, join today. Uh, Simran says it's some kind of an invitation. Simran Ranhawa. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's some kind of an invitation. It's a cycling club advertisement, according to Abhishek. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So now you're on the right track. So cycling club, join today. So the two students said, okay, this is probably uh, some kind of advertising and uh, it's an invitation to join. Sure. So what kind of uh, information do you think it will include? Yeah, so Pachu says, yeah, it's joining a cycling club. We even see this kind of graphic of a bicyclist in the background there. Uh, so what kind of information will be included in this uh, advertising? What do you think? 
if it's asking you to uh, join this cycling club, what kind of a logically think about if you made a pamphlet for your own cycling club and you were inviting uh, people to join it, uh, what would you include? Okay, Onisim says, well, certainly the benefits, so the advantages of joining the club. Absolutely, Onisim, I think that's great thinking. So, yeah, the benefits of joining this club. Uh, Amarnath, yeah, eligibility. Okay, um, there might be an age regulation or a uh, capability. It might include some information about facilities, absolutely. So eligibility, uh, facility, okay, yeah. Uh, Abhishek says the pros of joining the club. Uh, Abhishek, that's the same as saying the benefits of joining the club. So pros and benefits, that's, those are synonyms, Abhishek. Uh, what else? I think there would be probably some other key information. But she says maybe some different uh, kinds of uh, uh, programs. Yeah, so I think that's what you're saying, Pachu. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the different options or programs. Yeah, there might be like a 10-kilometer biking tour. There could be like a Saturday 40-kilometer. Uh, okay, so Pachu says maybe some pricing and discount. Yeah. Sure, so some demographic information. Oni seem very good, like location and so on, right? Location, absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, now, for strategy two, let's look at the questions and read questions that have information which is in the text. Okay, so let's take a look at the questions here. Here we go. Okay, these are uh, short answer questions. It says, write no more than three words and or a number for each. So these are short answer. So uh, it's good to read these because all of this information is somewhere in the text. It usually comes in the same order as the text, but that's not a guarantee, okay? IELTS doesn't promise you that. So IELTS doesn't say, hey guys, we promise that the answers will be in the exact order of the questions. It usually is, but I have seen it where it's not. So be careful, okay? Uh, let's read these together, students. Let's read these together, okay? So the seasonal rides take place on, okay? So this will be some kind of a date. Okay, so a time, it's clear from the question. The normal route is a return trip to, okay, this should be some kind of location. Members are told in a something about the routes for the next month. Okay, I'm guessing this will be, so what would you guess? So for number three, uh, when you read this, what do you think goes into the blank? So members are told in a something about the routes for the next month. If you had to guess that question, hi Pantha, hi Abdallah, uh, what do you think? What could be going into this blank without even reading, just using your own mind, your own critical thinking? So the people who are a part of the club are told about the direction of where you're cycling in the next month. Uh, where? Where would you tell your members that? Okay, what makes sense? Onisim says it's some kind of a noun. Yeah, but can we be more specific, Onisim? Can we guess even more specifically, Simran, what that noun could be? If I want to inform the members um, about some kind of information, uh, where would I give that information? My guess for this would be something like an email, a bulletin, a text message, 
okay? Uh, so some kind, or maybe in a meeting. Yeah, it could be a meeting as well, a kanj. I think that's a good idea, onisim, in some kind of a group meeting. Sure. So use your critical thinking. Here we go. Uh, number four, the club runs social events and yearly something for members. So again, I might guess social events, yearly parties maybe, or yearly meetings. I don't know. Uh, in the near future, the club will be forming a something program for youth. Okay. Good. Number six. Members are encouraged to volunteer at the town's something on the weekend. Okay. The club believes it is very important to something to the community by donating time to various causes. Okay. Uh, maybe give back, if I had to guess. Something is the time commitment per month for a club director. Okay, so this is, again, some kind of a noun. Good. All right, so we read those. We understand them. Uh, now, uh, for step three, we should read the passage, okay? Visualize the passage and keep the information in mind. So strategy three, read the passage, visualize. It means picture what you hear or what you read. Sorry, you're going to hear it in a second as well. What you read and keep the information organized in your mind. Now, in general IELTS uh, section one and section two, searching for answers can work sometimes. Just be careful for paraphrasing, okay? Paraphrasing means they're using different words in the passage than the questions, all right? But when you're practicing reading at home, you should read the passage and not just practice searching, okay? It's really important, okay? So remember this important tip, all right? Uh, when you are practicing for IELTS reading at home, you must read the whole passage and not just practice searching for answers. That's not effective. It's not just bad for the IELTS, but it's not effective as a life skill, okay? Uh, the goal in the grand scheme, in the big picture, is to have good reading skills in English. That's how you uh, live a happy, successful uh, life where you make good money and uh, you know what's happening in the world around you. So uh, you must read the whole passage and not just practice searching for information. Okay, that will not get you too far. Uh, and that's especially true for students who need those express visas and those high band scores. Okay, so keep that tip in mind. All right, students, so for this passage, uh, let's read, let's visualize, then we will answer these questions, okay? Uh, so this is the, again, the East Bradford Cycling Club. For those of you that have our books, um, this is reading audio CD6, track number five. So I'm just going to uh, hop over to our website here, uh, log in to my student account at the top. And once I'm logged in, then I have all of these goodies to help me improve my band score, including, of course, all of the audio CDs. So I'm going to play this. Uh, I'm going to play this reading audio. We have audio for all of the reading sections in our courses as well. Uh, so I'm going to play the audio. Uh, read and uh, read aloud. Okay. So you can hear yourself, visualize and focus on what you're reading, okay? I'm going to play the audio with using my microphone and a speaker. So if it's quiet for you, just turn up your volume on your side um, and uh, maybe use a headset if you have one, okay? All right, here we go, students. So get ready to listen and uh, read, okay? So listen and read here. Here we go.
East Bradford Cycling Club. Join today. Do you enjoy cycling? Do you enjoy spending time with like-minded individuals? Do you want to make new friends? Are you new to town? If the answer to one or more of these questions is yes, then you should join the East Bradford Cycling Club. When and where? We meet each Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. We also have a more casual ride, optional, Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m., May to October only. The exact meeting place and cycling route changes from week to week. The itineraries are decided at the monthly board meeting for the following month. Most commonly, we take a ride from the town centre out to Mount Wilson Park and back, but this is subject to change. We let you know in a monthly newsletter about the upcoming month's itinerary via email. What do we do? We cycle. But we do so much more. We have monthly social events as a club and annual special events for members and their families. We also give back to the community in many respects. Volunteer opportunities. We love spending time in the community. Over the next three months, we are starting a young cyclist program within the East Bradford Cycling Club. This club requires volunteers, and if you are willing, you will be able to help encourage and coach the next generation of cyclists in the township. Do you have children? If they would like to join the youth club, sign them up. We also have a program where members of our club make a bi-weekly visit to the local soup kitchen for a few hours on the weekend. We feel it's critical to give back to the community at large, and this is one small difference we can make as a group. Board of Directors, Directors Wanted. There are currently two openings on the Cycling Club's Board of Directors. The time commitment is one meeting per month, usually for about three hours, and various administrative tasks, which collectively take about two hours per month. Okay, and that's the reading. So, just a moment, we'll go back and answer these questions. Now, uh, when you're answering these questions, students, so let's have a look. I'm just going to stop the audio here on our website. Uh, so now, when we look at our fill-in-the-blanks questions, uh, we should at least know uh, where and what we are looking for. So the first question is, the seasonal rides take place on. Okay, this is coming somewhere from the beginning all right here we go so can uh, somebody tell me uh, uh, when the seasonal rides take place so according to what you see here behind me uh, when do you think the seasonal rides take place Yeah, it should be a day, and it's three words maximum. So, of course, season is a time, right? Okay, you have to think season is a time. Okay, so if you're thinking about time, you should realize we're talking about when, right? And... Uh, if we're looking here, it doesn't say season. So if you're just searching, and this is where you have to be uh, careful, students, with skimming and scanning. If you're just searching for the word seasons, uh, you won't find that. Uh, Bupinder says Wednesday evening, and Wednesday evening is a very good answer, uh, Bupinder. Uh, how do you know that? How do you know that that's the season? Okay. How do we know that's, a, that's the seasonal? How do we know that it's not every Saturday morning? So how do we know this is the answer and not this one? What is the paraphrase for the word season? It's not the optional. That's right, Abhishek. It's May to October. So May to October means seasonal. 
okay? Uh, because May to October is late spring uh, through summer to early fall. So that's how we know it's seasonal, okay? All right, uh, so the answer is Wednesday evenings. Very good, all right? So the first answer is Wednesday evenings here. And again, careful with the uh, instructions. This has no more than three words and or a number. So it's a good idea. If you say Wednesdays, you will probably get it correct. But it's safer to say Wednesday evenings. Okay. All right. So Wednesday or Wednesday evenings. All right. Uh, so the next question is, what I did there, students, is I just double-checked the spelling. I meant to give that to you as a tip or a strategy. You check uh, the spelling. Make sure you don't misspell a word that's in the text. Okay, the normal route is a return trip to. So here, return trip to, we're looking for a location. And it should come after uh, Wednesday evenings, right? Now, location, you're looking for the where, okay? So here it's the when and where, so it's probably still in this paragraph in the where, okay? So what's the answer to that? Return trip to. The exact meeting place and cycling routes change from week to week. The itineraries are decided at the monthly board meeting for the following month. Most commonly, we take a ride from the town center out to Mount Wilson Park and back. But this is subject to change. So what's the correct answer? Okay. Again, the question is, so just so you see it one more time, the normal route is a return trip to. So this is where you come back to, okay? So again, it's paraphrased. You don't see the exact same words. Okay, so from the town center out to Mount Wilson Park and back. Simran says, well, that's got to be the town center, right? And Onisim agrees. And you're right, okay? Uh, so town center out to... Uh, Mount Wilson Park, okay, and then back. So that's the uh, return trip back. So town center is correct. Uh, if you have the word the, it's okay, uh, because in this situation, you can have up to three words, but it's not necessary, okay? So the article is usually not necessary. So the normal route is a return trip to the town center. Okay. Uh, British or American spelling on center is okay. British spelling is like this. Okay. So one or the other. It's fine. You get it for, from both. Okay. So the return trip. Uh, members are told in a something about the roots for the next month. Okay, um, what are they told in? So what's the answer here? We talked a little bit about this. Okay, was it a newsletter? Well, again, we can check. And this is why it's, um, okay. Here we go. So town center, so it's coming after that. We let you know in a monthly newsletter about the upcoming month's itineraries uh, via email, okay? Uh, what's the best answer? Yeah, so you have newsletter, okay? What's the safest answer? Remember the, um, the question says, or the instructions say, three words, 
Okay, so it says no more than three words. So members are told in a monthly newsletter will probably work. Or if you want to be really safe, you could say monthly email newsletter. Okay, that's a very accurate answer. Monthly email newsletter. All right. Uh, that way you're sure that you will get it correct. You're sure that you're not missing any keywords. Monthly email newsletter. Okay, you just have to remember uh, the words. Uh, Onisim, you don't have to add the word email. Okay, uh, monthly newsletter is probably enough, but IELTS can be a little bit finicky. It means they can be very... Um, demanding with precision. So uh, email, if you include it, you're definitely going to get it correct. Okay, it's a good question, Onisim. So I'm just really on the safe side by including all three key words because it says I can have three words. If it says no more than two words, then I would just say monthly newsletter. But because it says three words, I want to include email just to be on the safe side. Okay. All right. Uh, the club runs social events and yearly something for members. Um, what does it do yearly? Does anybody remember or should we go back to the reading? I kind of remember because I visualized this one. So here you're going into the uh, what do we do? We cycle, but we do much more. We have monthly social events as a club and annual special events, right? Special events, that's here. Annual special events. Um, which word is paraphrased in the question? Onisim, that's right, special events. So which word is paraphrased in the question? Which key word? Did anybody catch that? So it says, we have monthly special e or social events as a club and annual special events for members. Okay, take a look. The club runs social events and yearly special events. For members, the word that is paraphrased, and this is what you should, uh, yeah, that's very good, Pachu, absolutely, it's yearly, okay? Uh, another way to say yearly is annually, okay, A-N-N. U-A-L-L-Y, annually. So the uh, reading passage doesn't say yearly. It says annually. Okay, so pay attention to that. All right. Um, in the near future, the club will be forming a something program for youth. All right, some kind of program for youth. So you're thinking, okay, this is coming after. I'm looking for the word youth, maybe children. Okay, and uh, here we go. Okay, we love spending time in the community. I'm just going to erase this. I think most of you have it now, so I'll take this off so you can read the passage. Okay. So, uh, here we go. We're looking for the word youth or children, okay? When you see the word youth and it's a key word, you want to paraphrase that. You want to think of children and you want to think of kids. So, you're looking for all three of these kinds of words. So, if I'm looking through the text, then right here I see children, okay? Right here I see youth. Okay, so what's the answer? All right. Okay, one more time, I'll show you the question.
In the near future, the club will be forming a something program for youth. So we found children. Now you're thinking of the word program, so some kind of a program. Anybody? What's the answer? Okay, youth, children, kids, and... Yeah, very good, Dan Deeru. It's up here, Young Cyclist Program, right? So here's the word program, and here are the modifying words. Young Cyclist. Yeah, Young Cyclist Program. Very good. Good for you, Dan Deeru. Yeah, Simran got it as well. Great. Good job. Okay. So Young Cyclist. Uh, always, um, always make sure that uh, your answer makes sense. So once you've put the answer into the space, read the sentence again. In the near future, the club will be forming a young cyclist program for youth. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Uh, if I put the word biweekly in there, Onisim, it doesn't make sense. Okay. It's out of context. All right. Okay, uh, next question. Members are encouraged to volunteer at the town's something on the weekend. Can anybody answer that question without going back to the text and search? In a perfect world, especially students, if you're trying to get a band eight or a band nine, you should not be searching for every question, okay? Uh, some answers you should remember just by visualizing, okay? So here, members are encouraged to volunteer at the town's something on the weekend, so give their time. Uh, where does this club volunteer? When we read the passage, you hopefully pictured this. Okay. Yeah, Abhishek, very good. Uh, just the other way around, okay? Not kitchen soup, but soup kitchen, okay? So it's called a soup kitchen. But good, you remembered it, so that's great. Soup kitchen. Uh, if you put it the other way, Abhishek, you will get it wrong, okay? Uh, it has to be soup kitchen. Uh, I'm not sure um, which countries have similar types of um, social services, but in the U.S. and in Canada, uh, there are these uh, community outreach programs called soup kitchens, uh, where basically people make these very thick soups, like a thick, um, almost like a stew, and then people who are less fortunate can go there and get a, a hot bowl of soup, usually with vegetables and some kind of meat like chicken. And that's called a soup kitchen. Okay, so the name of that is a soup kitchen. But you, I just explained it. So hopefully you caught it. I know there's a little bit of a lag. Okay, so a soup kitchen is a, an organization of people who volunteer their time. And they uh, make these thick, hearty soups. Uh, with vegetables and some meat, usually some bread to go with it, and then they give that to, for free to the community. Okay, that's a soup kitchen. All right, uh, the club believes it is very important to something to the community by donating time to various causes. All right, if I have great English skills here, uh, then I can just figure this out. Okay, Onisim says, give back. And I agree. Yeah, so give back to the community means to return uh, the favor to the community. Okay, now if we have to, we can search for that in the volunteering section. But if you're confident, then, um, then just leave it. And you can see it here. We feel it's critical to give back to the community at large. So there is the words give back okay that's a uh, phrasal verb it's a very common way to express when you return a favor 
So return a favor, you give back. All right, good. Good for you, Onisim. So give back. Yeah, absolutely. Again, students, uh, in a perfect world, you're not searching for every single answer. Something is the time commitment per month of a club director. Okay, so this is per month. It's a club director. So those are um, the words that we're looking for. We're looking for a time. Okay, let's go back. This is obviously coming from the end of the uh, reading. So board of directors. All right, what is the answer? So coming from these last three lines, what is the answer for that last question? What's the amount of time? What do we see? So we see the per month, okay? Anybody? So what is the time commitment of a director in the month? Read carefully. So the time commitment is one meeting per month, usually for about three hours, and various administrative tasks which collectively take about two hours per month. Ah, careful, Shima. Again, remember, students, that IELTS is testing for band nine, which means an expert user of English and also somebody who's using really good logic and critical thinking. If I'm a director at this cycling club, how much time am I actually spending at the club? How much time do I have to spend? It's three hours. So remember, uh, okay, this is kind of like, and I know a lot of people don't like these, but um, uh, they're basically word math problems, right? Remember your math classes in high school where you had to do uh, solve word problems, right? So you have three hours here. The and, what is the and in mathematics? The and in mathematics is a plus sign, right? Various administrative tasks, which take about two hours, so per month. So what does that equal? Now some of you are going, oh, geez, yeah, I got to be careful about that. It's not give or take three hours, Onisim. It's only three words maximum, right? So careful, careful with these questions that seem too simple. Is the time commitment per month of a club director five hours? Yep. And you need five and you need hours. You need both of those. Okay. Now in English, we usually don't start a sentence with a number, especially if it's less than 10. So we would probably write that like that to be perfectly safe. Five hours. Okay. Five hours is the time commitment per month of a club director. Careful, careful. Okay. Uh, remember, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Usually the last question in a reading is the most difficult. Okay. Keep that in mind, students. All right. So five hours. Okay. Uh, let's quickly check our answers and then we'll move on to another reading. So our answers here are on page 184 in our book. So here you have Wednesdays, okay, um, Mount Wilson Park. So we got that one wrong. We'll check why. Monthly newsletter or newsletter, special events, young cyclists, soup kitchen, good give back and five hours okay so seven out of eight okay well let's see what happened with uh, mount wilson park i think that might be a mistake in the answer key myself but i'll have to check that with our guys all right uh let's go back to page 88 and just see Uh, so it says the normal route is a return trip uh, to, 
And yeah, I think the town center is the correct answer because if it were Mount Wilson Park, this should be from, okay? So just ignore the answer key. That's a mistake in the answer key. It would logically be the town center because you're returning to the town center from Mount Wilson Park. So I disagree with the book on this case. Maybe I'll uh, pick that fight with our... Uh, test composers. But uh, anyway, uh, let that be the worst of it. Um, the other answers are for sure correct. So that is fantastic. Okay, you've done a good job there. Again, remember this tip. If it seems too easy, it probably is. Okay, that's an important uh, tip. Okay, so if an answer... seems too easy, especially if it is one of the last questions because these are the most difficult questions. Then it probably is and you must read very carefully. For example, you may need to do a little bit of math. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, keep that in mind. Okay. Yes, Onisim, it seems that we did beat the answer key. Uh, it's very, very rare, but there have been mistakes on official IELTS exams as well. Okay, nobody's perfect, right? Uh, but your goal here is to get as many correct as possible. If you can get seven out of eight, that's fantastic. You're going to get a very high IELTS band score. All right, uh, good job, students. Uh, let's cut back to our reading here. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at the uh, next um, passage. Okay, so here we go. Woohoo, look at that. We got something quite interesting coming up. Um, it says, okay, I'm not going to even read this for you. What do you think this is? So if you're looking at the title, uh, what do you think you're about to read here? So what are you going to read in this situation? Just by looking at this. Onisim says, this is advertising and it's advertising for Cuba. Maybe a holiday to Cuba, the White Sands. Yeah, absolutely, Onisim. I agree with you. That looks to be the case. It looks like, I mean, it says... Visit Cuba, huge letter, letters, the White Sands. What is the White Sands? What do you think? I know it's a little bit tricky for you to see that because it's blue on uh, blue, but the White Sands, what do you think it is? Some kind of a holiday event? Yeah, Myanmar Khan, yeah, you had the right idea. Some kind of holiday event, Simran, yeah, visiting Cuba. Absolutely, okay. All right, students. Let's take a look here. Ooh, there we have some more information. So we have room type, okay, basic apartment, luxury apartment, sure. So it's maybe some kind of a resort. And then we have some multiple choice questions. Uh, should I read all these multiple choice questions and answers before I do the reading? Is it a good idea? So. You know, I read the title, I realize it's about some kind of a resort, holiday. I'm thinking, all right, it's going to include prices, different kinds of rooms, events, activities to do. Okay, Myanmar says, no, sir, don't read those multiple choice answers. For multiple choice, I can read the question. Okay, so the questions are okay, but not the answers, because three of these answers are wrong and confusing. So only read the actual uh, question or the statement, but don't read uh, the possible answer choices, okay? First, you should absolutely read the passage. So let's read just the questions. So how much beachfront does the resort have? Okay, good. Uh, which of the following is not automatically included in each all-inclusive package. 
Sergio is asking which could be the best option to start in the reading test, like matching headings, sentence completion, true or false. Uh, Sergio, you should always try to go in the same order as the question. So a uh, list of headings should be your first always because that one helps you with other questions that focuses on what the paragraph is about. That one you will only find for academic reading or for section three in general outs. You will not find it for section one and two in general IELTS, okay? Um, all right, uh, let's, uh, I, does that answer your question? I hope that makes sense, Sarju. Um, if it doesn't make sense, uh, you can send me an email and I'll give you more details, okay? All right, number 11. Which of these statements in the ad is actually false given the other information given? All right. What is the goal of the employees at the resort? Sure. Which apartment includes the airport transfer and trip to Havana and costs less than 1,600 pounds? Okay, last question. How much does it cost to upgrade from the luxury apartment to the waterfront apartment? All right. So we've got some prices, some packages. We're keeping those in mind. Now we're going to read this uh, Visit Cuba advertising pamphlet. Again, I'm just going to jump back to our website. Uh, students, I'm going to play the audio for this reading. It's really good uh, for you to practice with our premium course with the audio. So you can practice your reading, listening, pronunciation all at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to play this through my mic. Uh, turn up the volume if it's quiet for you. Of course, if you're using the website at home, it's much better audio quality. Um, here we go, everybody's ready. Put in luxury in this Caribbean heaven. Here just, just a, a moment. Visit Cuba, the white sands. Want to get away this winter? Why not visit beautiful Veradera, Cuba? the home of the beautiful five-star White Sands Resort. You will enjoy unmatched comfort and luxury in this Caribbean heaven. Here are just a few of the features you will find at White Sands. One, unparalleled beauty. Situated on 10 beautiful acres, including a quarter mile of private ocean front, if you want to visit the Caribbean, this is the place to visit. Two, Unparalleled luxury. When we call our resort all-inclusive, we mean all-inclusive. No limitations, no restrictions. If we offer it, then it's included in your holiday package. From scuba diving to high-end cocktails, to golf and tennis, to massages, it's all included. Some of our packages even include a day trip to Old Town Havana, optional. Three. Unparalleled service. You will not find better service than here at White Sands. From our hotel administration staff, to our bar and restaurant staff, to our massage and relaxation team, our employees care about one thing above all, making sure you have the best holiday possible. Four, unparalleled fun. We know you will have the time of your life. We offer the best entertainment, fun and games, excursions, and sporting competitions. Whatever your game is, we have you covered. And if your game is sitting poolside with a cold beverage, we have that covered too. Please have a look below at the packages we offer. Please note that each package flies from London Stansted Airport. Transportation to and from the Veradero Airport is not included in the fee, unless otherwise stated. Room type, eight night stay. Basic apartment. Airport transfer included? No. Trip to Havana? No. Cost airfare included? 1,200 pounds. Room type, eight night stay for luxury apartment. Airport transfer included? Yes. Trip to Havana? No. Cost airfare included? 1,500 pounds. Room type, eight night stay. 
Luxury waterfront apartment. Airport transfer included? Yes. Trip to Havana? Yes. Cost airfare included? £1,850. Okay, students. So that is the reading passage. Now, uh, for the questions, here they are again. So here's question number nine. Here's question number 10. Take a look at those. Here's question 11. Twelve and thirteen, and last but not least is question fourteen. So my challenge to you students is to answer these questions on your own. Send them to my email. Uh, this video will be available shortly on uh, this uh, YouTube channel in about one hour. So you can go back to the end of the video to look at these questions, look at this reading passage. Answer the questions, send the answers to my email, I'll give you that in just a moment, and then I can respond with the answer key. So you can check how you did, okay? That is your homework challenge. So answer these questions using the reading. Just remember, it's at the end of the video. And send them to my email. Uh, this is my email here. Adrian at G-I-E-L-T-S-H-E-L-P dot com. Send your answers there and I will give you the correct answer key so you can figure out how you did, okay? Um, this is it for this week's General IELTS live streaming. We will continue on Wednesday, uh, which will be the 13th, I believe. Uh, so Wednesday at 13.30 to 14.30 Central European Time will be our next class. We'll start off with some IELTS speaking. Make sure that you uh, join me then to continue your learning for IELTS so you can get those high band scores. Again, the materials are coming from our websites, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, when you go to the homepage for gieltshelp.com, click that big red button to join us there. And if you are studying for the academic IELTS, then go to this website here, aehelp.com, and click that big red button to join there. Uh, thank you so much, students, for uh, your viewership this week. Keep up the good studies. You all have brilliant brains. Remember, we're programmed to learn languages. Uh, we're able to do that well, so never give up. You will be uh, better than good at English eventually. Just keep pushing forward. Much love to all of you. Have a great rest of your weekend, a good start to the week, and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye for now.